Good morning, Whimsically Musical Teachers. Today's video is a very special video. It's Hispanic Heritage Month, which these maracas actually, um, the old PE teacher that was here got these for me actually from Mexico, which my kids think these are like the coolest looking maracas ever. Anyway, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, and I have rented a bunch of books from the library that I've seen other teachers recommend, a couple that I found on my own, uh, different books that I'm gonna use throughout my classroom for Hispanic Heritage Month. Some of them I'll get to, some of them I just checked out to see what I could pull from for next year, but I made this video so that I could share the books that I picked and just tell you a little bit about what I would do for each one, and that way you can make sure that you're incorporating Hispanic Heritage Month into your classrooms. I think it's important to be doing that, um, because a lot of people do a good job of making sure that we mention Black History Month and even Women's History Month is like becoming a big deal, but I don't want Hispanic heritage to get left behind in the dust. So here are my tips and tricks for using it in the music room. Wow, on the floor while I read some of these books. I'm not gonna read the whole book to you, but anyway, the first book on my agenda is Tito Puente, The Mambo King, Rey del Mambo, um, which I actually have really enjoyed this book. This book is all about the story of Tito Puente, which if you don't know, he's basically one of the founders of the Mambo music. And it just has really beautiful pictures. And I really like that it also has the Spanish translation in here in case you wanted to read it in Spanish. But the pictures are just beautiful and it does a really good job of just explaining how he loved to drum when he was little and he got into music lessons and all sorts of stuff and he won different contests talent shows for his music and eventually he had his lifelong dream of having his own orchestra band at, named after him and then it ends with let's see some more music he wins his first grammy out of five and then it finishes with just him being able to perform all over the country and so this is a really really great book i enjoy it a lot um and i've discovered two ways that i can use it so I didn't realize until after I had already written a song for this to use my kinder babies that it had a pattern in the back. Uh, it has this one line that said all throughout the book, like you can just see it on all different pages. Let me find a page that it's on. Oh my goodness. Now that I say that, you can't find the pattern anywhere. Of course, that's how that would go, right? Okay, here it is. This little tomb ticker pattern. And then it has it again. Okay, you get the deal. It's on there in multiple pages. Here. Okay. Anyway, the pattern, it shows the rhythm on the back. It goes, tum tick a tack tick tum tick tom tom tum tick a tack tick tum tick tom tom So it's really good for tea ticka if you're teaching that in third grade or fourth whenever you get to it. So you can teach them this pattern and have them do that pattern while you're reading the book the entire time. Or you can add that as a rhythm and just play that pattern a couple of times. Um if you're like every couple of pages. So that's a good one for third or fourth. I'm using it for kinder because I made a song for it for my kinder babies, which of course you're welcome to use if you want. It's it's not like anything like soul me, this, that, or the other. I just made a cute little song that they're really using the song to do steady beat with their instruments. So the song goes, Tum ticka tum ticka tum tum tom, the mambo king he boogies on. Tum ticka tum ticka tum tum ting, he is the mambo king. And they really like it. And then we add Mara no egg shakers, claves, and uh, castanets to it. And they just take turns keeping the steady beat with me. Half, so a third of them are playing castanets, a third of them are playing claves, a third of them are playing egg shakers, and it gives them a chance to try out a new instrument. And it went really well. So I'm gonna use that, but I definitely might try this with my older kids another year. So that's Tito Puente. And then this one is Esquivel, the space age sound artist. And this one is about Juan Garcia Esquivel and about how he ended up making space age lounge music, which I had not even heard of, honestly, before I read this book, but it was like a really cool book. Um, and he makes stereophonic music. He experiments with like tone, tempo, instruments, voices. It's actually really cool Spanish music. So I suggest you listen to it, but it was uh, basically 
a little story about his life. And I love the pictures. The pictures are really great in here. And the kids like that, like, the kids actually look like them. Like, the skin tone and everything. Because books you read nowadays just, like, don't really have that. So, it's just all about him and how he got to perform his music. And how everybody was shouting out his name, which, of course, every artist wants. And then I really like that at the end it has, like, in, it has notes about his life and about the illustrator's notes and all of that good stuff. And then it has a picture of him so that the kids can see who he was. And it even says his top songs in the back. So this is a really great resource, a really good book. I was planning on using this with third grade and it also made a song for this too for third grade, which honestly you don't have to use the song. And I'm not even sure that it's my favorite, but I couldn't think of anything else. So I used it for now, but it goes, cause they have the words rinty tin tin throughout this book a bunch of times. So I took some sounds. It has bunches of sounds all throughout the book. So I had Rinty Tin Tin, Wish Wish Sam. These are the songs of the Space Age Jam. Rinty Tin Tin, Wish Wish Sam. Thanks to a squibble, the Space Age fan. And that's been going pretty good too. And I made sure that I had me, Ray Do, because um, my third graders are a little behind this year because I didn't get quite all the way through me, Ray Do at the end of second grade because I had my baby early. So that's why I'm helping to make sure that they're practicing their me, Ray Do patterns. But this is a really great book as well. I very much enjoyed it. And then next, Drum Dream Girl. Uh, this is by Margarita Engel. And this, I absolutely love the illustrations in this book. Um, so it's basically about this little girl and she's a drum dream girl and she dreams of being able to play drums on the stage one day and the pictures are just beautiful but her dad and basically the whole culture of Cuba has said that um, only boys should play drums which of course all the girls are like oh, why can't girls play drums anyway she keeps dreaming about it and dreaming and wishing that she could play drums on the big stage with everybody else and she's watching all of these other people do her dreams and not her and then finally she convinces her dad that she should be able to do it so then he says that he will give her he'll find a music teacher for her that would be able to determine whether or not she's actually good enough to play the drums so then she goes with her music teacher and she practices and she practices and she practices and she basically decides that um, she's going to, he decides that she's going to be able to perform finally at a cafe. So she performs and everybody loves her and in the end they decide as a nation that they're going to allow girls to play just drums as well as boys, which I really liked this. I liked it and the kids really loved the story and it was great. However, I was a little upset that it was a guy that was once again deciding whether girls get to play the drums or not. I'm not going to lie. That was a little bit upsetting. Uh, but if you can move past that, it's really a great book. Um, that's just my opinion because I just thought, well, what was the point? But that's just me. Anyway, there's a really, really awesome ORF uh, instrumentation arrangement for this. Uh, I believe it's at Music with Miss Dunk, D-U-N-C, her Instagram. Um, her teacher say teacher store as well, but I found it through her Instagram link. Uh, and she has a really good ORF arrangement that I did with my kids to this, and they loved it, and it was wonderful, and it was awesome. So that's what I use for Drum Dream Girl. This book is Celia Cruz, Queen of Salsa. And I've been using this with my fifth graders. It's a biograph, a biography story. Um, so it talks about Celia Cruz's life, um, the false queen. And I'm using it with fifth grade. And I'm using uh, a specific lesson resource that I'll tell you about. But um, my fifth graders, I love these babies. But sometimes I struggle to keep their attention. So sometimes we're not necessarily doing exactly what I want to do in fifth grade, but it's okay. So I figured maybe I could get their attention and have them learn a little bit. So I've been reading them the story about young Celia Cruz and a talk about how she just loved to sing and everybody told her that she always had a beautiful singing voice but she just didn't believe them and then her nickname was Azucar which is sugar because she had a voice sweet as sugar and she would just sing all over the country until finally people started to notice and she was like uh, she was doing all of her talent shows and performances and things and her dad said though that she should be a school teacher because singing is not necessarily a safe career but then her professors told her that she should chase her dreams and the pictures are really beautiful and it shows her going to music school and then her finally getting her first gig in the group La Sonora Matancera. Um, sorry for my Spanish. And all of this stuff and it keeps going and telling her like how people were not, at first not wanting her to lead the band because she was a girl and then she had to get pushed past that and realize that her voice serves a purpose to sing for the nations and about her meeting her husband performing at the, uh, where is it, Hollywood Palladium 
and all of that. And then ending with, once again, her being nicknamed Azucar by all of her um, devoted fans. And it's a really beautiful book. And they actually really enjoyed the book. Like they were interested in hearing it. And then they really liked, I always try to let them see a live video of the person that the book is about if possible. So like for the Esquivel one, I showed my kids a video of him. And then for Celia Cruz, I showed one of Celia. And then for, um, what was it? Tito Puente, I showed one of Tito Puente. Now for this, I'm using a worksheet. It's actually a sub sheet. You could leave this as um, for your sub if you wanted them to do something during Hispanic Heritage Month, but I did it because one, I needed a quick and easy grade for my fifth graders, and two, I knew that it was something that could keep their attention because honestly, I just struggle. I just struggle in general. Anyway, I got this from Miss Cookie's Music Room, I believe. I'll link it. But uh, basically, there's two worksheets. This one has them fill in the blank about sentences about Celia Cruz uh, with the word bank down here of stuff like where did she, where did it say she was born? What was her nickname? What band was she the leader of? All of that. So it's helping them review facts about her. And then on the back, it's just mix and match of like it says something like Celia Cruz's home country and then you would go down there to Cuba and this, that, and the other. Anyway, it was a quick and easy assessment for me to see if they were actually like listening to the story and whatnot and they actually had fun filling it out and then their teacher, they really liked getting to tell their teacher at the end about Celia Cruz because I told her that they could, uh, she could ask them and they would get quizzed on it. So I'm really liking this book and I was, oh, they all have beautiful pictures but this one was a good one. Um, and then here are a couple of books that I'm not using in my class this year but that I'm, I still have out and about and if they have free time I let them look at it uh, because I also want to use it at some point. So this one is called Island Born by Junot Diaz. Oh my gosh this is the cutest little book ever. It has beautiful drawings. But anyway it's about this little girl named Lola and her class is doing a project on where they're from. And so they have to draw pictures and talk about where they were from. Um, and lots of them are from different places like India and Africa and all over the place and she's from the island. That's what they call it. But she left when she was a baby, so she doesn't really know anything about the island. So she's feeling very down and downtrodden about it. So she goes to start asking her family members all about um, what happened on the island. And they would tell her things, but she's like, but I don't remember this. And she was starting to get really upset about it. And she was like, well, how can I write about a place that I don't even remember? And then her grandma gives her really good advice and tells her just because you don't you don't live in a place or don't remember a place doesn't mean that the place is in you and of course at first she doesn't understand what that means and she keeps talking to her grandma and then she talks to one of her grandma's old friends Mr. Mir and he really puts things into perspective for her and helps explain it and tells her the story about a monster and on the island and all this other stuff and I'm telling you the pictures are just great and then finally after she finished talking to Mr. Mir, she starts writing in her journal and writing all of the stuff that she's gonna say in her report. And she goes to bed, she wakes up, she goes to school. And then they say, did you try to remember anything? And that's when she starts to say, I tried really hard, but nothing came and it made me feel bad. But then I realized that I don't have to feel bad because even if I've never set foot on the island, it doesn't matter, the island is me. And then she says, okay, well, let's show us what you drew in your book. And then she shows them the island in her book. And it's really, really beautiful. It's a cute, cute story. So I don't know exactly how I'm going to add it yet. Honestly, I didn't add it because it's, it's kind of wordy. It's a very wordy, long book. So maybe I wouldn't actually use this in my room. I'd probably have it out and about on my bookshelf um, for them to look at if they had free time. But this is another really good book to use. This one is called Grandma's Records. I stumbled on this one by accident. I believe I saw it in somebody's video, but I also happened to um, find it just hanging on the shelf by the other Hispanic Heritage books. It's called Grandma's Record. It's a really good little book. And uh, it's about this kid named Eric and how he always spends his summers with his grandma in El Barrio. So this is a Puerto Rico book. Um, and his parents would drop him off and he would spend all of this time with his grandma. And their thing that they liked to do together was listen to records. They would listen to all sorts of records from different cultures. And um, she had one specific song that was very special to her. And whenever she played it, she would put her hand over her heart and close her eyes as she sang along. And she would say, sometimes a song can say, everything that is in your heart as if it was written just for you and so then they would you know listen to records together and it was just really really cute bonding and they'd just imagine about all the different things that the singers were singing about and then one day um they had hold on 
And then one day they had um, one of her favorite bands, um, the band's lead singer Ishmael Rivera came over for a surprise visit and they, the grandma had offered to make them home cooked meals basically. And so she got to see one of her favorite bands and meet them in person. So then they invited them to their first New York concert. So they were able to fly to New York to hear the latest music of the band. So they spend all day getting ready, super cute. They get to see Cortillo y su combo with Ismael Rivera, um, and they got to see it in concert, which is awesome. And then the thing, the special thing that makes this book so great is that they ended up singing a song just for Carmen, and they sang, Carmen's the grandma, and it's the song that she loved, that she always put her hand over her heart for. And they, and they said, this one's for Carmen, and it was really beautiful, and then everybody starts putting their hearts, hands over their hearts. And he asked how, he asked Ishmael, the lead singer, how he knew about his grandma's song. And he said that the song was about coming to a new country and having to leave those you love behind. And that people put their hands over their hearts to show that their hearts remain in Puerto Rico, even though they may be far away. That has a really great meaning and everything. And then as he got older, he would start to bring new records for his grandma of different genres. And then it says that even now as an adult, when he's playing CDs in his studio, he imagines he's in his grandma's living room and that she says, you be the DJ today. So it was really great. And then here it has the special song of Grandma's in Spanish and in English. The song's En Mi Viejo San Juan by Noel Estrada. And then it talks about the three band members over here, Rafael Cortijo, Ismael Rivera, and Sammy Ayala, I think. Anyway, um, this one is a really good one, and I'm definitely going to use it next year. I don't know how I'm going to use it yet, but this one's just like a really good feel-good one, you know? And it's about Puerto Rico, because a lot of these are on Mexico and other things, and you don't hear about Puerto Rico as much, so I think this will be good. All right. This is another good biography book, which I think I might use with my fifth graders again next week. This one's When Angels Sing, the story of rock legend Carlos Santana, which I know David Rao mentioned in his make moments that are in a YouTube video, I believe. But this one's just all about Carlos Cantina. So about how he was going to have a different name and his name ended up being Carlos and just about how he wanted to be like his grandfather and his father who were traveling musicians. And that was just his biggest thing. And he wanted, the thing that he wanted to do was make angels sing and weep when he was playing because that was how he felt his grandfather and grandfather did. And he would try different instruments and he just never felt that way until finally he got to the guitar. And once he finally found the guitar, he figured for sure he would hear the angels sing and he didn't. And then he joined a mariachi band and he just didn't think that that was for him, that type of music. And he was just still very upset. And then he started to hear the blues and he was like, okay, maybe if I play guitar with the blues, I'll hear the angels sing. And he practiced and he practiced and he practiced and he still didn't feel the way that he thought he should feel. The pictures are really gorgeous. I do like the pictures. And then he started to wonder if angels would ever sing when he played and he was very upset. And then I have more pictures. And he just kept practicing and searching for his sound in different venues and different places. And then he finally realized that the music had always been in him and that he's the one that creates the angel music. And it's just very, very good. It shows about how eventually he gets a Santana blues band and that he was able to change the world by performing for the first time at Woodstock, which I didn't know that, that was the first place he performed. I learned that too when I was reading this book. It was really awesome. And it just shows him finally being a musician at the end at Woodstock. And it says, you took the stage, you stopped looking out, you started looking in, and at last you heard your angels sing. And then, of course, it talks about Carlos Santana as well and has his discography and further listening and all of that stuff. This one's also a really good book. They like it when they learn about people that they might know in real life. And I sometimes, I played one of the songs for one of the classes the other day and they realized that they actually knew who he was. They just didn't realize that that was him, you know? So there's that. All right, I have two more. One's at the computer and then one's just right here. So I'll do this one next. This one is called Donza by or it's about Amalia Hernandez and El Ballet Folklorico de Mexico. It's by Duncan Tonatiwa. Anyway, this one is all about Amalia Hernandez, and she was the founder of El Ballet, El Ballet Folklorico de Mexico. 
which is basically a not only ballet, they focused on modern dance, a modern dance slash ballet troupe that performed all throughout Mexico and internationally. And she focused on really bringing the traditional folklores of Mexico and other cultures and turning them into dances, which was really cool. And so the pictures are just beautiful. Once again, skin tones match the kids. They really enjoyed that. It is a very good description of like how she, her parents wanted her to be a school teacher, but she wanted to be a dance instructor and how she put, made her dream come true anyway. And by the end, she had her own studio and she had really made sure to represent all the different regions and traditions and cultures of the dances from back then. And I mean, the pictures are just phenomenal, honestly. And it's a really, really great book. So I added a cute little ORF arrangement for my first graders to practice um, alternating their hands between D and A. And they would just play back and forth while they said, dancing her dance and singing her song. Amalia kept dancing all the day long. Dancing her dance and singing her song. Amalia kept dancing all the day long. And that was just good ORF exploration for them at the beginning of the year uh but you could probably use that with oh no i did it for second grade not first second grade um because they're starting to get ready to prep doe and ray so i just had it a little bit early but anyway i really loved this book too uh this one is a little wordy as i discovered from the first day because i didn't realize how wordy it was and i had read the book to them and taught them the song and then had them in, add instruments. So the second day that I did this, I just taught them the song and stuff and added the instruments the first read through and then we were fine. And you get to show them the ballet on YouTube after this and they think it's like the coolest thing ever, seeing the dancers with their skirts and the hats and the scarves and everything. They really, really enjoyed it. Okay, the last one is called The Best Mariachi in the World, which uh, they didn't have a copy of it at my library. So I actually found through, I can't remember who posted this the other day, a website called Epic, which has a bunch of books that you can literally read them on the screen. It's awesome. It has a small subscription. I think it's like 10 a month. Anyway, I'm on the month trial. But it basically is about a little kid named Gustavo that really wants to be a mariachi and he can't play any instruments. And his family, he wants to play all of theirs, but they keep saying, don't touch it, you'll break it. And he's very, very sad and no one will let him play in their band. And then one day he goes outside and just starts singing to himself and singing and singing and singing. And everybody's like, what's happening? Who is that singing? Apparently he had a very, very beautiful singing voice and he just continued to sing. And then when he turned back to go feed the chickens, his whole family and everybody was clapping and cheering for him, saying that he was beautiful and that he could finally be a mariachi. In fact, the best mariachi in the world. And they all made him breakfast. They fed the chickens for him. And he got to wear a charro suit and a sombrero and sing all of the songs. And everybody clapped and cheered for him. And he finally lived his dream of being a mariachi. This it's the cutest thing ever, I'm just saying. So then I used, um, it's the Hipster Music Teachers, which I will link hers below. She has a Teachers Pay Teachers product where it has an ORF arrangement for the kids that uses Soul and Me. So I used it with first grade and it went pretty well and the song's super cute and it teaches them about the instruments of the mariachi, like trompeta, guitarón, all of that, so that the kids are able to learn what they are in Spanish as well. And it was just a really cute ORF arrangement. So I'll make sure to post that down below as well. But this book is probably one of my favorites out of the ones I used. There are tons of other Hispanic books out there. Like there's this one that Ricky Martin wrote about Santiago has a dream. And I could not find that book anywhere. Um, and I could have bought it, but it was a little pricey. So I'll buy it for next time. And then there's a couple that I didn't mention. But these are just a couple that I have found that are really useful. And that I'm excited to dive into this year for Hispanic Heritage Month. I would love to hear if you have other books that you use or if you use these books differently than me. I'm loving to just build my repertoire for Hispanic Heritage Month. And then I also use a couple of dances and other things, which I'm not going to spend much time on this because this one was mainly about the books. Maybe I'll do another video on um, dances and activities. I've done a rhythm stick dance to Los Machetes, uh, which I found that on YouTube. I've done La Raspa, the Mexican hat dance. That is from Game Plan, but I also just knew that one in general. I've done, I made up a folk dance to Los Pollitos, which is Los Chiquis, which I did with first grade. And then I know I did one more. I did a maraca activity. I can't remember at the moment, but I did a couple of things. But anyway, uh, this one was mainly about the books. I hope to hear back from you and see what else you're using in your music classroom.
If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe down below and give this a thumbs up if you liked it and think that it could help other music educators. Also, feel free to share it with other music educators if you think that it'll help them. I really enjoy making these videos to not only record and document what I'm using in case I forget, but that way that I can help inspire other music teachers and make your journey um, in teaching music just a little bit easier and just provide different repertoire that you might not have thought about on your own. So I don't know what my next video is going to be yet. It might be a weekly vlog. It might be a further in-depth in dive on different resources that I've used for Hispanic Heritage Month, but I'm excited to see um, and hear from you guys. So make sure to comment below if any of these helped or if you're going to use anything in your room or different things that you are using in your room that I didn't post. And I'll make sure to see you later.